Hey everybody, it's Pam and Bill at Country Living Newbie, Custom Decor in Spring Hill, Tennessee. It is a beautiful evening here. Um, <laughs> hopefully nothing else will go wrong with this day. <laughs> we started out with our entire shelving of white paint falling down and splattering all over the place and spent hours and hours cleaning that up um, with a beloved customer and friend, Kristen. Thank you. She talked me off the ledge <laughs> while I was looking at our poor paint room with white just everywhere. Um, so we've had an accident outside the front of the store, which our store is like right on the road. Like there's almost no, um, what's the word? One of those Easement. easements. Yeah. And then we just had two huge branches fall out of a very old tree um, on the side. This house is built in 1856. Everything around here is old and two large branches just fell off a tree. Um, and yeah, so we're hoping everything's gonna go well for us tonight. Anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's some things that we can no longer say on Facebook when we're doing a live video. So there's certain things we would love for you to do with our video. Um, you, you know what they are, uh, so please do that and we'd appreciate it. Uh, so we're gonna be refinishing this uh, late 1800s Victorian dresser. It's got a marble inlay. Um, the the drawers and most people have heard of dovetail drawers um, we weren't quite sure what these were so we did a little research I don't know if you can can you see them or should I bring closer I take it well I already forgot the name the, uh, the guy's nap, name nap joint nap joint so it's K-N-A-P-P -P. and these were some of the first joints that were made by machinery um, so before um, or after the, the dovetail kind of came along, Mr. Knapp uh, made a machine to do this type of joint. So there's several different names for it, but the only time these were really done was between 1870 and 1900. So this is a pretty old, um, pretty old piece right here. So we, we did a lot of prep work on this. Um, there were literally like, I don't even want to tell you what was in here. Like we had to take the whole thing basically, uh, obviously all the drawers out, clean it up extensively. So whenever you guys get furniture that's old, make sure, use the cleaning process to really look at the furniture, look what needs to be repaired, get every nook and cranny because there were things that we were just, you know, were falling apart um, that we had to repair. So these, you know, we took all this stuff off. There were pieces of wood that needed to be uh, renailed in, things that needed to be uh, glued. Um, just just multiple things and then there were like mud dauber things all shoved up there and spider eggs and just all kinds of stuff body parts I mean so. it was like <laughs> horrific <laughs> so um, after we just kind of you know brushed it all down and uh, cleaned it like four times with Dixie Bell's white lightning we rinsed it real good so now it's um, it's looking pretty pretty darn good um, and nice and clean, but it did need quite a few um, little touch-ups and repairs here and there. So we did that, um, and we're gonna we're gonna get some paint on it now. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use some slick stick. So Dixie Bell makes a bonding agent, and you don't usually need this. I never recommend it to people uh, unless it's really needed. And where you want to use this is on a super slick surface. So we have a marble top here. Um, chalk paint likes things that are porous, right? And plastic, um, marble, formica, um, those kind of things are super slick and chalk paint just doesn't like to bond to them. So this is a bonding agent. We're gonna put uh, one coat on the, coat on the piece of marble and we're gonna let it dry. We'll probably do two coats. Um, the instructions, I believe, say to wait overnight. So. After prep, coat the entire surface, let dry two to three hours, recoat, and then let dry overnight. So um, I've, I've used slick stick and not have waited overnight. Uh, it can certainly be done, um, but always, if you're trying a product for the first time, until you really get to know it, follow the directions. That's the best way you're gonna be successful. So um, you'll hear a lot of, of us retailers say, you know, we didn't do that or we don't follow the rules, but that's because we've used it before and we kind of know what we can get away with and what we can't. But always follow the directions um, the first time you use a new product. So we're going to put the white lightning aside because we don't want to use that. 
instead of our water. We have our slick stick. The paint we're gonna be using is Savannah Mist. And I think um, when we first talked about doing this piece, we were gonna do Flea Market Decors Aged Ivory. But I kind of changed my mind on that because uh, we have to be careful in our area. People don't like a lot of color, but um, that's why I kind of wanted to go neutral. But I, I just feel like I want to start doing a little bit of color. So Savannah Mist is kind of a kind of a um, pale gray blue. So it's not crazy color, but it's a little bit of color. And then we'll figure out after we get our whole base coat of Savannah Mist on. Maybe we'll do um, maybe one one color blending. Uh, or maybe a redesign with Prima Transfer or maybe some wax, but we'll get this color on first as our base coat and we'll kind of kind of take it from there. I think I'd even talked about using maybe the wood grain tool on the top. So um, I don't know if that quite goes with the Savannah Mist now, but we can uh, see when we get there. So we're not going to get to do the whole thing today, obviously. So we're going to take some of these off and we'll try to get to at least one drawer. Um, and maybe the big side, and we'll do the slick stick on the top. I did um, already do the small drawer with Savannah Mist, just to kind of see what it looks like. And here's the dilemma. You know, when you um, get a piece like this that's so interesting, uh, you kind of have to decide what you're gonna paint and what you're not gonna paint. And a lot of times, uh, you know, we will paint part of the drawer because if it doesn't go all the way in, uh, you know, you're gonna see a little bit of the um, natural wood on there. And I, I just, I felt like I couldn't paint over that because it's just so pretty on the joint. So um, we'll decide, you know, we, we won't go over it for now. But <clears> There's we'll... a spot where we might be able to maybe just tape off just a little bit. Yeah. And still be able to see the joint. Okay. So if, if it's an issue, yeah. maybe we can do that. Just do a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just kind of have to see how it goes once the drawers go in and see what, um, you know, maybe is not flush and what's still sticking out. So, and then not every piece is the same, you know, you kind of, you kind of got to go with it and learn what the piece has to say to you and how you want to go about painting it. So, first things first, we're going to open our slick stick. The furniture talks to you? Yes, it speaks to me. Okay. Does it speak to you? Mm -hmm. Not unless I build it. <laughs> All right, this is the ginormous jar of slick stick. It's the 32 ounce. If you've never used slick stick before, it does have a bit of an odor, um, so use it in a good ventilated area. You can still use it inside, but it's not um, low odor like the paint and the waxes. It does have a little bit of a... It's not harsh though. It's not harsh, but it's, you know, it's enough to notice it. And then, so we're gonna use a couple different brushes tonight. Um, we have a couple of the Dixie Bell Minis, and these two are the same. So there's a flat mini, it's a two inch flat, no angle, and there's the angled mini, which is my favorite, but uh, we're, we're gonna use both so you, can guys, you guys can see them. So we're gonna start with the flat mini, always, and um, don't forget this part, always stir your product. Um, you can give it a good shake, but, but the like boss, slick stick, um, the glazes, your top coats, gator hide especially, Always give them a good stir and make sure you're getting everything uh, all consistent so the product is the same all throughout. And you're not just working from the top and maybe some of the important ingredients are hanging down there at the bottom. It's usually not an issue with chalk paint, but when you shake something, yeah. you introduce bubbles yep. into the paint. Yeah, especially a, a top coat. A top coat's in particular. Oh, yeah, that'll make you... Don't shake your top don't coats. Don't shake your top coats. Okay, so we're not using a lot of this. It's, you know, like any of the Dixie Bell products, you really um, right, want to... My, moving off the base. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I figured on the top. So the, the consistency of Slick Stick, and there's some um, little divots in this marble, so we have to get in those, um, is a little, little different than the paint. Um, it's like a little... So it's a little thicker. So just a little bit different. And you always want to try to minimize your brush strokes throughout this whole process. So I always try to go all the way across once I get um, 
part way done because you don't want to you don't want to stop in the middle. I'm not too worried about getting it. I, I take this off. I, it doesn't really matter if I get it on the wood, but it's just one more layer that I don't really need to have to worry about. That's the actual, no. So again, we're just trying to keep it nice and smooth, not lay it on too thick. And if I, a lot of my moving is probably gonna, thing is still... there's still something there? Yeah, I see it. Yep. Yeah, um, one of the reasons I don't like to paint right out of the jar, and I'm doing it with a slick stick, because we go through this stuff pretty quick, but as you kind of wipe it on the side and it starts to dry, you'll get these little... Clumps. Yeah, little clumps of, of just dried product, whether it's paint or slick stick or boss or whatever it is. So if you could avoid that by pouring some of your stuff onto a paper plate or in a cup, and then you won't have to keep wiping your brush off on the edge of your container. It also makes for a nicer removal of a lid. Because <laughs> they get pretty crusty too. So I'm not worried about in here because I know this, um, the top part of this covers the entire edge of the marble. So I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, getting the, the sides of it. They're just not going to be seen. Explain what happens like right now when you took your brush and dragged it from the end. Oh, you get this like this little lip of paint. So you got to be careful, you know, if it's especially if it's an edge like here, if it's an edge that's going to be seen, don't let it dry there because it's going to be raised and then you're just not going to have a smooth a smooth edge. So always go off the edge, you know, don't drag your brush that way because then it leaves a row of uh, paint there. Sometimes you have to in order to get the spot, but try to make your last finished coat in the direction off the board. Off the, yeah. And some of this I really just have to dab because the mar it's marble, so it's, you know, it's not a um, super smooth surface. And then I'm just going over it. And, and when I go, when I go over this, I'm barely touching this because I don't want to take off what I just put on. And then we're going to come under here. You don't need to. <laughs> I am not doing that. <laughs> However, I can do this. So we went through and taped what uh, we thought we needed to tape beforehand. And again, if you get it on the wood, slick stick, it's, it's not a huge deal. It's not going to hurt. But again, it's just one more layer that you have to worry about. Not getting brush strokes or waiting to dry, etc. Okay. So we got one coat on and it looks pretty smooth. So we're gonna let that dry. And depending the stuff actually dries pretty quick as long as you don't slather it on um, too much. So we have one thin coat. We'll definitely do another coat when that's dry. And then we'll decide if we're going to be painting the Savannah Mist right over that or if we're going to do a different color. I, mean, I think this gets like glue. It's a bonding agent. So if it dries on the outside, you'll never get your top off of it. <laughs> you will just be sorry. So take the extra moment and clean off your top. No dirty tops. And there's gonna be some in the lid, so that's gonna be an issue later, but that's when I just asked Bill to get the top off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's our slick stick. Um, we're gonna put this in a little baggie so our brush doesn't get hard as a rock. And I think we'll start, while that's drying, we'll move down to the drawer and we'll start putting our Savannah Mist on the wall. So here's our Savannah Mist. The other thing we're kind of experimenting with is we get a lot of questions about how far a jar of paint will go. So we're going to use the 16 ounce jar and we're going to more than likely do two coats on this. So we will see what we have left over when it's done. And I did stir this and shake it before the, um, <clears throat> we came on camera, so I'm not going to worry too much about it now. And again, if I wasn't planning on using this whole jar, uh, I would be pouring it into my plate and painting from there. 
We're going to use our angled mini to do the drawer. I'm going to come down here. And you want your Mr. Bottle. So this is your friend when you're getting your um, first coat of paint on and subsequent layers of paint, and especially if you're blending. It's a nice fine mist. It's not a squirt bottle, so it's not going to leave big blobs of water um, anywhere, but it's a nice mist. So we are going to paint this whole drawer. I think we'll avoid the edges for now. And I'm going to wet my brush first. And I'm not getting it soaked, just a little bit damp. And I'm not, I'm not using a lot of paint. Okay, it's just really on the edge. And I think we'll start on the top. And this is just our base coat, right? So, I mean, we don't need, we don't need perfection. And I can, I already see, I forgot to tape that side off. <laughs> it's trying to be so good. The more you try to prepare. Which side? Right here. Oh, the more yes. you forget. So let's just do that. Some people can do this without taping, but I'm just not that good. You're just not that patient. <laughs> that too. And again, we're just going one direction. Coming back, going over the whole thing. And because we don't wanna we don't wanna see where we started, we where we started and where we stopped. And I'm barely touching this. When you feel your brush start to drag, just get a little more water. Don't need a lot. Bixie Bell has very good coverage. So if you're going for kind of a distressed look, you may just need one coat. That is totally up to you. Show the end of your brush when you're done with that. Just, no, no, just nope. this way. What? I, just the fact that there is, the only part that you, paint with is the bristles, the tip of the brush. Yeah, so there's, and there, there should never be paint all the way down to here. And <laughs> as I, you'll find a lot of people paint that way. And it'll happen, you know, I mean, just by the nature the brush is going to hold more and more paint. So it'll start to creep down, but I always kind of put my fingers here just to keep myself in check. So I don't dip too, uh, dip too far. It's, it's a hard habit to break. Um, if you paint, you know, with a, a brush that's just loaded. Ch chalk paint, you know, really, and Dixie Bell in particular, other brands may be different, but Dixie Bell, you know, your first coat should be a, a, a thin coat, light coat. It'll dry quicker, it'll be smoother, you'll have less brush strokes. I think a lot of people like to think they can put one coat on a piece of furniture and that should do it and the heavier it goes yeah they won't have to and do I it get again. it but you have to just be resolved in your mind that it's going to take more than one coat so yep. make the first one make it count very light <laughs> yeah yeah there is a little bit of patience involved which many of us are just not good at. <laughs> Life's too, too busy, right? So the, the round parts, I'm just trying to get done first, so as they start to dry, I don't have to worry too much about retouching them up. Again, when you see me go back over a spot, I'm barely touching, because I, I, you literally will take off whatever you just put on if you go to, uh, if you press too hard.
And all these steps are important because we get a lot of um, questions or people calling us um, asking about breaststrokes. You know, I have too many breaststrokes. How do I get rid of breaststrokes? And I mean, honestly, unless you are a very experienced painter, it, it's, it's almost impossible, I feel like, to get no breaststrokes with chalk paint. The only way to do that really is to spray with a sprayer because obviously then you're not using a brush. But there are definite ways to minimize brush strokes. So we talked about some of those. You know, use, use a little bit of water, keep your brush damp, use a good brush. If you're using a chip brush. Which is fine. And there's, I use a chip brush all the time. Um, just, you gotta pick the right brush for the right, the right piece of furniture. Susie Smith says hi. Hey Susie. How are you, girl? Well, apparently she has a heavy hand with her painting. Because she just <laughs> got an eight ounce paint blue and ran out. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, we're, um, we're doing a little test to see how far we get with, um, with a 16 ounce. I am 99.9% .9 sure we will have plenty to do this entire dresser. And if I was spraying it, we would not. <laughs> so yeah, with spraying, I mean, you need to use water and dilute your paint and you lose a lot of it, right, in the machine or the... the you lose it in the air. To the air too, yeah, yes. Yeah, you just over spray. And... Yep. So I'm, not, I'm not particularly happy with that over there, but you kind of see what I just did and I... It's, it's drying and I should not have gone over it. You just, you can't do that. You just kind of have to be patient and if, if it doesn't look good, let it dry and maybe hit it with some sandpaper or let it kind of level out before you go messing with it because when you start hitting it after it's dry, it gets lumpy. It's not good. Not good. And I'm, I'm barely touching this. And we decided, um, we had talked about using Boss, which is um, the uh, bleed through preventer. But we decided not to go with a white paint. Now we could still, we could still get it. Um, this especially- is, This is light enough where it could. Yeah, especially when we put our um, top coat on. Because sometimes that's when you'll see it. Sometimes you'll see it immediately through your paint. But sometimes you don't see it until you put your your top coat on and then it starts pulling that yellow or reds or pinks through. So if that happens, first of all, you cry because <laughs> you work so hard. And then you, you need to put, you can put Boss right over your paint. And then you can just do another coat of um, another coat of paint. So there's a clear boss, and you can put it right over your paint. Susie says she needs to use a, learn how to use a light hand. Yeah, I'm barely discipline, touching. Susie. Self discipline. <laughs> Stop yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I mean, because it's and I'm doing it now. So it's so tempting to see something and just go, oh. You know, but just don't, don't do dry. it. Let's walk don't away. do it. Walk so there's there's some spots that I miss that's light, but I don't care. All my all my strokes are even and going one way. Nothing stops in the middle. Yeah, so the bad spot is that corner that got a little lumpy. Not yeah, too bad. Little sandpaper okay. will take care of that. That's okay. So we are going to take this out. I'm going to try to stand up. <laughs> Bill's got about a hundred things wrong with him right now. <laughs> As I laugh, it's not funny, honey. It's not funny. I don't know. You seem to laugh pretty pretty hard on that. <laughs> Almost enjoying my pain. So our slick stick um, looks like it's drying pretty well. So let's um, let's turn this and let's do like a big side. Watch your paint. Yes. You just have a knock paint over. <laughs> don't even. <laughs> <laughs> this oh is gonna knock more gosh. paint over. The whole shelf, guys, like the whole shelf of whites through kernel mustard. 
all over the floor. Okay. So now we're gonna do, is this good or should, angle wise? Yeah. No, I think it's good. Okay. Okay, so we are going to, we're gonna keep using our uh, mini angle. We're gonna get a little more water and a little more paint. And we're gonna get under here. This edge is kind of funky, it's not like, super flat, so we're probably going to have to play around a little bit with that. Hey Trula. Hi Trula. And there's a lot of um, imperfections in this, so that's the reason I'm dabbing is because there's all these little nicks and holes especially on the edges which yeah. is typical of furniture that's 120 years old <laughs> i know some people are probably um freaking out right now that we're painting this but here's the thing we're furniture painters <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna paint furniture um this kind of stuff just really isn't in style especially in our area so either this sits in someone's basement or our warehouse or whatever and never gets seen or it gets beautified and enjoyed for years to come so you know there's there's a couple ways to look at repainting antique furniture Susie says Pam needs to come to my house <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to your house come to your house we don't get to do anything <laughs> ever she, she's dying to go to be <laughs> get out of this store <laughs> uh, we have a camper we have kayaks uh, a canoe an ATV um, heck we don't use any of it <laughs> we will though we kind of knew what we were getting into when we started this business. What is this? I don't know, but it's drying, so leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you can kind of tell. So now I'm going to like stop. Just stop yourself. <laughs> so on this part, I guess we will go across yes. with the grain. We're going to be very careful on this edge. And we'll just go all the way across and then we'll fix it. Yep. If you can always go one way, that is the best way to get smooth. I mean, when painting over furniture that already has a finish on it, you don't have to go in the grain, of, you know, direction of the grain. But with the brush strokes, you are going to notice. Yeah. You know, typically the grain goes in this direction. And you kind of want to keep it that way. And we have, um, it's, it's really dry here right now. Um, although not, <laughs> not for long, we're supposed to get some bad storms tomorrow. Um, so the paint, the paint's drying Code really red. quick. Oh my gosh. What? So we're from Florida and you know, we're used to like hurricanes and stuff. It, it rains in Tennessee and the schools close. Uh, you get like, <laughs> it's Monday, but we're going to give you a code red for Thursday because it's going to rain. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's funny. But tomorrow we're supposed to get some bad stuff. Yeah, we do get tornadoes here, which we don't, we don't, don't yeah. usually get in Florida. True. All right. We love Tennessee. We do. We do. It's beautiful here. Even with the code reds. <laughs> This is a really good brush if you have big surfaces like this because it's got a large surface area. The angle's really nice. Um, Dixie Bell makes some big oval and round brushes too, which the oval ones are good too because you can kind of press them flat. And they're also good for blending. 
So we get you know, a lot of questions too about what's your favorite brush or you know what brush should I use? And it's hard to say. I mean, you just need to try them and go by whatever the piece is that you're doing. I mean, if you're doing a big flat piece like this, you don't want like a pointy skinny brush, right? It'll take you forever, number one. And you'll have probably a million lines of brush strokes. I'm just gonna paint over the furniture thing down there. True is in Orange Beach, Gulf Shores. Right now? Yeah, this week she says. Oh. That's what that means now. And she's watching us paint. Oh, well, why? Oh, <laughs> Aren't you on vacation? No, wait, Orange Beach, isn't that, that's not Florida. Isn't that Florida? It's Gulf, Alabama. Gulf, Gulf Shores? Shores? Isn't Gulf Shores? Florida has Gulf Where Shores. Where are you, Trula? I thought it was Alabama. Where are you? In case we need to come see you. I mean, Orange Beach sounds very Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Is it the Panhandle? I thought it was Alabama. I'm horrible with geography. So let's go ahead and just do this edge. Your head is really Let me, um, anyway. <laughs> I'm like, oh, here. sorry guys, sorry. <clears throat> Sandy says hi from Ohio. Hello from Ohio. Vicki loves this color. Savannah Mist is a super soft blue gray. It's very pretty. I was saying in the beginning of the video, um, we don't, we can't sell furniture with color <laughs> around here. Um, so a lot of the stuff we do has to be very neutral, and I just couldn't do another white piece of furniture. It is Alabama. Alabama yeah. just before the Pensacola Bridge. Yeah. See that? So this is where I you... I would describe Savannah Mist as kind of like the color of the mist that comes up from like eastern from Georgia. <laughs> it does, Isn't that kind of like the same color? It does kind of look like that. I'm going to yeah. come in front of the camera here. Go ahead. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to wait to do in here because what's going to happen is this is starting to dry and if I hit it now, uh, I'm going to ruin some of my edge. So we'll come down here and, and then we'll go back up. Sometimes you have to be a little strategic with which way you go. Trula says she needs a buffet. She needs a buffet. I know someone who could build one. <laughs> We'll hook you up. And I haven't really wet my brush, um, I think, since I started the top. Sorry, I'm swinging my <laughs> brush around. You're going to paint the camera lens. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I think it makes things blurry for people, too, when you move it all the stuff yeah. around. Which we don't see that, so we think like the video's great, and then I go back to watch it over and answer questions, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. Because we always go back and watch, you know, just to make sure we didn't miss any questions, and we always try to answer questions. So if you're catching the replay later on, obviously you're not catching it right now because we're live. <laughs> <laughs> But put those questions in, and we always, we always come back and answer the questions. And again, um, Facebook's rules have changed a little bit. They're watching some different things. So the things we usually say that we'd like you to do uh, when you're watching one of our videos, it's hard to say now. So you know what to do. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Beth Thorne Adams says, love your videos, Pam. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> That's okay. You have everything to do with BJ it. BJ McVeigh is watching. Hey, BJ. How are you? I saw your picture with Mike Wolf from, from Pickers, girl. You like BFFs with him? That was cool. And he lives in Leaper's Fork? Like, I know he has a bike store in Columbia, and he's always um, around here. But I don't think I knew he lived in Leaper's Fork. Can you, intro can you introduce us? <laughs> I can ask him to do one of his shows here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not too pushy, can he, is it? <laughs> can, he, can he do a live from here? Well, he was at Blue 32. Yeah, that's he right. He knows Bonnie yeah. at Blue 32. 
All right. So I feel kind of safe coming back now and doing this. You know, about the videos, um, Beth, thank you for that. Um, we're trying to do as many as we can. Uh, we, we try to do a couple a month on the Dixie Bell page, uh, on their main page, but the calendar fills up like that. Um, you know, and they have to be on the page to help um, facilitate things. And, you know, there's only so many times a day that they can do that. So uh, we didn't get any spots on the May schedule. So most of our lives this month will be from our own page. And then, you know, we'll share them, of course. Hope I'm saying this right. Redonia? Oh, that's, Redonia, a, that's a pretty Redonia name. Norman. Hello from South Louisiana. Oh, fantastic. You guys are getting some storms uh, yeah, today, what's, I think. What's, yeah. uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the camera probably has like mist all over it, which is appropriate because we're using Savannah Mist by Dixie Bell. So, yeah, thanks for joining, guys, and telling us where you're from. And it means a lot when you join us on our page. Um, it means a lot when you join us on the Dixie Bell page, too. But we definitely want to start growing our audience on our own page. All right, that's an interesting uh, crack down there. Yeah, I know. I don't Which think I, I noticed think that. I noticed that before. So we may need to fill that. It's pretty big. Yeah. So that's maybe once this dries, we'll do we'll use Dixie Mud. Okay. On that to fill it. So Dixie Bell makes a um, product called Mud, and it can be used multiple ways. So um, most often, maybe not most often, but I think it's most known for its use uh, as, as a raised stencil. So it's a textured, thick, uh, well, mud, <laughs> basically. So it dries hard, but you can create raised stencils with it. But it's also a wood filler um, and uh, for repairs. It comes in white, black, and brown. But, and you can also tint it. So if you wanna make a raised stencil in peony, 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 have fun. Peony. <laughs> Peony. Peony. Shut up. Um, That's right. Apparently I, I said her name wrong. It's Radona. Okay. I think I'm saying that. Are we saying that right yeah. now? She spelled it phonetically. Okay. Me. Thank you. <laughs> um, Apparently he goes to Pockets. Yes. For breakfast all the time. All the time? Well, maybe he could let us know next time he's going to be there. You have to follow the rules. You're not allowed to approach people. I know. That's kind of an unwritten rule in Tennessee, if you guys didn't know. Na Nashville, you know, there's a lot of stars around here that just, like, you'll run into, like, in a Starbucks. And you're really not supposed to, like, approach them and ask for selfies and that kind of thing. Okay. So, there's our flat side. Um, Most people with that crack down there, as I have actually done in the past as well, would be very tempted to try to fill it with paint. But what will eventually happen is that you'll fill it with paint, it'll look good, walk away from it, and then all that paint that you stuffed in there will drip down <laughs> and you'll have a nice big drip at the bottom of that crack. Don't fill your cracks with paint, with people. Paint, no. Do it the right way. Safety tip. Do it the right way. All right, let's go under here so we can get this side done. And then we'll look at the front of it because I'm not sure uh, how much we want to paint on the front that's not going to show. So this is just one of those pieces. It's got just a lot of uh, edges and that kind of thing. So a lot of them won't be seen. And if Bill was spraying this, I'd be done. It would, <laughs> you would be done. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I have three coats and a coat of poly on. Yep. It's been ten minutes. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I don't think um, this part you don't see. Right? Th these are literally nailed on or screwed on from underneath. Let, you know what? Let's you may just have go to over do a little, little bit. bit of it. I, yeah. would, I would do so. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm doing this so light right now. 
Gonna get a little more water. So I haven't done a transfer on like a big piece yet. I, I have over 50 of them, guys. I stock um, Redesign with Prima, a lot of their stuff. So maybe we'll get bold. This kind of reminds me of what I said a couple videos ago about don't be afraid to be a beginner. Um, I have not been doing this very long at all. <laughs> Like, at all. Um, and you just got to kind of jump in. Watch a lot of videos, like this one, <laughs> and um, just learn from people. But don't be afraid. It's just paint. Hey, Madonna. I don't know where you are. I don't know. Are you looking up uh, the radar? <laughs> don't <But> scare her. <laughs> that's... What's coming if it hasn't hit you already? Oh no, are you showing her? <laughs> All right, we're gonna. Um, Thank you, Alan. You know what? Loved and shared. Yeah, I was gonna say you have to remove that before. Yeah, that. but I want to do another coat of slick stick on there. Let's do this. I hope I don't pull the slick stick off. I'm not gonna put that on real uh, tight. I think we can get our second coat of slick stick on tonight. Always work in sections. You don't want to, like, in the middle of this or the middle of your big side, have to go answer the phone or, um, you know, have to have to break and, and just leave half of it done where the paint stops and then you got to pick it up because you're, you're going to see a line there. You're just, you're going to. You're just gonna. I'm gonna get under here too. You're not showing the grays on the top of my head. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're a pretty manatee gray. <laughs> you have more paint in your hair than you have gray hair. <laughs> Look, man, after the story. Hey, morning, Edith. Sheesh. Edith, Edith? Edith Rosen, Edith? Edith We're Rosen. Yeah. Hey, Edith. How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> All right, we're taking this off. We've got a nice edge there. Ellen says she has storms moving in again. Oh. Where are you calling? Where are you from, Ellen? Where are you calling, calling from? <laughs> Where are you calling from? <laughs> I'm in. <I'm> <laughs> All right, so this is kind of where, let's turn this back this way. And for Donna says, "Oh my!" <laughs> what? That's the, from the radar. Oh. <laughs> Not looking forward oh to no. that. <laughs> oh no. All right, we're getting a little more mist on here. Um, this paint—if you've never used Dixie Belle, this is very thick. I mean, you see, it's very thick. So it's it's much easier to work with um, when it's damp, when you have a damp brush. We're gonna do the face here. And I don't know if it's just me, but I paint a lot <laughs> with the edge of these brushes. EJ says those are wisdom highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are you sh no, no, I, I, I'm, I don't I'm can't turn my back on you. I'm watching you. They're paint. not here to see my hair. I'm totally watching you paint. <laughs> I'm right, you are. Now, when you put your head right in the way, <laughs> there's not much else I can do about that. Yeah, there's all these. Ellen's from Missouri. Missouri, yes. Ellen, you've been on before. What's Ellen's last name? Kincaid. Kincaid. Okay. Yeah, guys, if you would um, invite a friend and. You know, what to, to say that? you know what you can say invite and you can say follow. Oh, okay. So there are some words you can say. Um, we are really working on our YouTube channel too. So I think we're up to 40, 40, over 40 subscribers. And I told Bill, and they're not all family. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple family because you got to get started somehow. We don't have that many family. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, jump over to our YouTube channel. What is that? 
What is what? A blue blob? Is it a blob? No, it's, it's a not. nail head? It's not a blob. It's a nail head. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, jump over there. We're working on our channel and getting some videos uploaded. So if you don't feel like watching um, the Facebook, usually I'll put these over on our YouTube channel. Trisha says, hey from Florida. Hey Trisha from Florida. Our old stomping ground. What part of Florida? Do you tell? I'm just... And Robin Gaines is also from Florida, from wow. the villages. Oh, my, <laughs> my brother's ex-wife's mom lives in the villages. <laughs> Best friend's former girlfriend <laughs> lives in the villages. <laughs> so this piece is, I mean, we're obviously going to paint um, these, you know, probably these and this part on the inside. Yes, you'll have to. Because that will show <clears throat> a bit. But we, um, this part, Bill did not get to repair yet. So we're going to stay away from that. Needs to be Google. Trish is from Dun Allen. Oh, Dun Allen, yeah. It's a nice area, Central Florida. North, north of what we north of we, we came we came from Spring Hill, Florida, and now we are in Spring Hill, Tennessee. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And we we share the building with um, Tuning Music School. Um, so Michelle Tuning owns the school. And she lives on Arbuckle Road, which is the road we used to live on in Florida. In Florida. <laughs> like, there was just so many crazy coincidences with this place. It, it just, it was just so meant to be, I think, for us. If you guys have any questions about anything Dixie Bell, you, you know, it doesn't have to be anything we're using. Um, is there anything you're working on? What colors are you using? Ellen has a buffet. Apparently she wants to get rid of. Oh. But she's in misery, so. Misery. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Trula, that's, uh, that's going to be, <laughs> yeah, can be you too far away. Can you and Trula hook up? Because she's looking for a buffet. <laughs> it's a bit of a travel. <laughs> Oh. Trisha lives in Rainbow Springs. You can make, oh, so beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. We used to go canoeing Many there. Many times canoeing and tubing. 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 Yeah. Oh, so much fun. Kid, oh, my gosh. Kids would fight and... Oh, f good fight, like on the tubes. A alligators. <laughs> Snakes. On, on the, <laughs> in the water with you. Manatees. Yep. All right. So you guys can see I'm still... Um, you know, going in one direction here, not overworking the paint, never stop in the middle. <laughs> Ellen says, have buffet, will travel. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, girl. She has a business card that says that. <laughs> <laughs> that could also be like a food, a foodie business too, huh? Probably. Yeah. Like buffet dinner. All right. So... Susie so says, can't get paint on stencil to quit bleeding. Look, on like a reusable stencil? Robin, oh. this color is Savannah Mist. Savannah Mist, it's a very light um, gray blue. So pretty. And we're, you know, I don't, we're just doing this as the base coat. I'm not really sure what's coming after this. I admire, you know, I watch a lot of um, folks on video. Uh, I love Pam from 44 Marketplace. Go follow her if you don't already. She's amazing. And you probably know Brush by Brandy and her blending skills. And um, there's just Heather and Kristana. There's a lot of really, really amazingly talented painters out there. Artists. I don't remember where I was going with that. But a lot of that is so much what colors you're going to use. That, that's exactly... The, the palette. Just, yeah. You know, the palette that you choose. You were just reminding me where I was, where I was going yeah. because it, it, I think it... I don't know. It takes me a while to, to figure out 
what colors will go with this and what I want to maybe highlight with. Or... Yeah, if you're blending three colors, what's the transition point? Yeah. And... So I think all that comes with practice. And, and I'll, again, I'll go back to what I say all the time. Just like you have to begin somewhere. You, you know, you can't just be, be an expert uh, without beginning somewhere. So just start. This is probably... All right, Suze, sorry, Susie says, yes, it's the reusable stencil. And she says the caviar bleeds around the stencil. It's a reusable one, so it's not sticky. Yeah. That's, so, that's a... I'm painting this part, right? Yes. Yes. At so, least the, the front edge, but you might as well do the whole do the thing. Whole thing. Um, I do a lot of stencils um, and reusable ones, too. A couple things. If you're using a raised stencil, make sure you have the right side down because sometimes the raised ones have a beveled edge and you don't want that part down because the paint, then the stencil doesn't lay flat and it bleeds. Um, so that's if it's a raised stencil. If it's just a regular, what are they? Um, I want to say mylar, but I don't think that's right. Is that, is that what it is? What is it? Mylar. What's the re reusable stencils like that Dixie Bell makes and, the, you know, the hard reusable ones. So don't, Just you probably mind. know all this already, but don't use a lot of paint. Um, and this happens in our classes a lot when people stencil. Um, keep your brush dry. And I use, um, I will use, I don't think I have one up here. So while you're doing that, Eddie Rawson had asked earlier, and I missed it, um, what did we use to prep this? So we used, we, you cleaned it? We cleaned it with, uh, so first I just wiped there it down. There was no sanding involved. None. There was a couple of things that needed to be repaired, but yep. other than that, it was. No sanding whatsoever. Um, we used Dixie Bell's White Lightning. If you're not familiar with that, it's a, a proprietary formula by Dixie Bell. It's uh, got some TSP in it and some other things. Um, but you put it on and then make sure you rinse it off. But it, it de-glosses, um, de-greases, de-oils your surface and just prepares it for painting. Um, it's an amazing cleaner, but uh, make sure you rinse it off. Um, I know some people don't have issues. I know people that have said they painted cabinets without rinsing it off and have no problem. Um, I find that it can cause some adhesion issues if you leave it on. Um, and don't get all the residue off. So it's an amazing cleaner. Just make sure you rinse, rinse it off. But that's all we did. Um, we cleaned it with, with white lightning, rinsed it, no sanding, and we just started laying paint on it. Alan gave a pretty good synopsis on what to do with the stencil. So okay. thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. The other thing that I have done in the past with reusable stencils is <laughs> spray the back with yeah. It, that's not always going to work in every situation, yeah. and it has the possibility of pulling yeah. the paint or surface off. Yeah. But if sometimes you can spray with uh, spray adhesive. Spray adhesive, yeah. Like 3M makes a spray adhesive, which is good. But again, you know, when you take it off, it you're, could, you're risking you're risking pulling it. It could not be pulling true. some stuff off. But yeah, super dry brush, up and down, pouncing motion. Um, Ellen probably said all this. Light the lightest. Dry possible, brush. yeah, dry, dry brush. Dry brush. Don't use any water and just light coats. You may have to do it a couple of times. Yep. Or... Yep. Okay, so um, our slick stick that we did is, um, woo, we gotta yeah, wrap up. We hour, gotta wrap so. up. So, um, is dry. So, uh, it dried in an hour. It's very dry here. Um, depending on your uh, location, you know, you may not be able to do your second coat right away. But we're going to put a second coat on. For those of you that just joined, um, this is Dixie Bell's Slick Stick. It's a bonding agent. This was marble. This was a marble um, inlay. And chalk paint will not adhere for very long <laughs> to marble. If you, here initially. <laughs> if you were going to um, paint something marble and hang it on your wall, you know, that's probably fine. But for the top of a dresser, no. And again, uh, when you're when you're laying this on, 
um, one nice even stroke across the whole thing. Get rid of as many brush strokes as you can because as you keep layering, if you don't kind of fix those brush strokes as you go, you're going to be dealing with them later. So you can sand them, but yeah, and, it's, and it's just another step that you don't yeah. want to have to do. And, and Dixie Belle paint is very good at self leveling, um, but you know, the, the more you can take care of it as you go, the better off you are. Yeah. I am trying to stick that down on the non sticky side. <laughs> All right. That's just not gonna work. So a slick now, self, self leveling. You mean like that jar is not moving off the table because it's level? It's level. Okay. Well, well, nothing in this house is level, as no, we know. That's this, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the paint will kind of uh, flatten itself out and level out its brush strokes over time. So you'll notice if you um, put a layer of paint on and then come back tomorrow the paint's going to feel a little bit flatter and look a little less brush strokey. You don't ever want to look strokey. No. That's never a good thing. <laughs> We're in healthcare, you never want to look strokey. Um, family guy episode. <laughs> yeah. So by self-leveling, it just means it, it levels and flattens itself out. And let's hope we don't take our paint off of this. And it's ruined. <laughs> nope, looks good. All right, so... We have two coats of slick stick. We'll figure out what we're gonna do with the marble. Um, off camera, we'll paint the rest of it. Um, we have two big drawers, two little drawers that sit on top. We'll get those painted. We have these really cute handles. I don't know, it looks like a pineapple, but I don't think it is. Typical for the oh, time it's period, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, I like them, see the, I like them gotta, the other way. You gotta put your fingers on there. I like them the other way. <laughs> So we'll figure out what to do with that. If you guys have suggestions of what you want to see on this, um, really after the base coat of Savannah Mist, I have no clue what we're doing next. Um, if we want to try maybe uh, another color blending, we can do that together. Um, if you know of a good redesign with Prima Transfer, there's some beautiful ones out there. I have almost every one. So throw one in the comments and maybe we could do that across the drawers. Um, yeah, did you call them pineapples? Yeah. Yeah, they're acorns. <laughs> they're acorns? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. See the leaf? You don't get you don't get pineapples on leaves like that. But... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yes. You <do. laughs> Thank you, Ellen. All right. <laughs> oh, Ellen said that yes. they're acorns. Okay. <laughs> if Ellen said it, I believe it. We have a bug on our slick stick. Really? Yeah. A little booger. Okay. So, um, thanks, guys. Uh. Don't touch it. <laughs> Just let the bug die and we'll fix it tomorrow. So thanks for watching guys. Um, again, you know, keep, keep checking us out on our page. We'll do more videos. We want to do videos that you want to see. We have a group. It's the Country Living Newbie group where, um, so we have a lot of followers on our page that just follow us for our store, for things that are going on, but don't necessarily paint furniture or, uh, or crafty and that kind of thing. So we have a group. Um, that we just started. I think there's about 30 something people in it. Um, so feel free to join that group and um, participate and let us know what you're working on. We want to learn from you as well. Uh, and if it's not Dixie Bell, that's fine too. You know, whatever projects you're working on, we can all learn together. And um, that's it. I'll make my goodbye short. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Ever. Goodbye. <laughs>